Hey guys, what's up? Downtown Portland. About to do a demonstration, protest, I don't know what the fuck they call it. <laughs> For uh, Stop Having Kids. So, me and Stop uh, Having Kids are about to meet up. And it's gonna be cool. And uh, you'll see in just a sec what the, the uh, what kind of fun we will have today. And hopefully we'll have some good conversations, maybe some drama, who knows. Um, but I'm really excited to meet up with Dietz from Stop Having Kids. He's well organized with all his <clears throat> signs and shirts. You know, they make it very clear what they're doing and what they're about. So, yeah, I'm right around the corner. We'll get to see what, uh, how's it going and hopefully have some fun uh, conversations about antinatalism and most likely some confrontations about antinatalism. <laughs> okay, here they are. Right over here. We got two people. That's cool. At least two. He told me that there wouldn't be that many people today, which is fine, but I see at least two. Cool, there he is. And we'll have fun. Once I cross the street, we'll have a good time. All right, see you in a sec. Actually, no, won't see you in a sec. Let's, uh, let's meet Dietz together, shall we? This is the first time me meeting him. So just hang tight. It'll be fun. Dietz! Good, man, how you doing? Good, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. I had no idea you lived out here. Yeah, I know, it's so funny. Yeah. yeah. I just, I thought you were in Seattle the whole time. Yeah. So it's really I thought, cool. I just assumed you lived somewhere in California. Uh, no, yeah, you're, you had funny. this one video a little while ago where you were um, hiking, I think. Yeah. And, uh, was that in Oregon? No, that was, at, I just drove actually north 30 minutes. Oh, okay. It was just Mount Silver Mountain or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. One woman who came up to us, uh, we were a different area of Oregon, uh, Portland, and she said that um, she adopted a couple kids. She said she cool. wasn't able to have kids and she adopted kids and she said she liked the message. There, there and it is. There was this one guy who took up a lot of my time, but he was he had some mental health issues. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I don't think he knew what he was saying. So. Yeah. yeah. I, th I can see how it's important to kind of, you know, vet who you're talking to in a sense where if it just, you know, that it's just not going to get anywhere, it's sort of a futile endeavor. But you can sort yeah. of still, I guess, have conversations. Yeah, but. I would say the vast majority of the conversations doing this are usually really productive. Nice. But yeah, every once in a while, there's people who are just in denial about everything. They just you say something that's going on in the world. Oh, no, that's not it. You say something else. Oh, no, that's not it. Yeah. And those people are like a total waste of time. Yeah, like, yeah. A waste of energy and a waste of time. Well, your, 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 your signs are awesome, too. By yeah. the way, I'm filming it just so you can see it. Your signs are cool because they don't... They don't, um... They're not too hard in the, into the ethics, you know, like... Well, they do, but they're not saying, like, you're creating a future corpse or something like that, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, they're, I try to... I just try to make it so it's as palatable to as wide of an audience as possible, but still not, like, compromising. Yeah, not, yeah. Not, like, being too soft or... It's a perfect uh, middle. The truth or, yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And it's, it's worked out so well. Last night we were in Seattle. Oh, yeah? Um, there were, I think, six of us total. Nice. I hired a model for one hour, but then he stayed an extra hour. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, no no one got, like, really hostile or angry at wow, us. Wow, isn't that weird? Barely anyone, like, audibly even disagreed. It's so it's so weird because in real life, though, when you're talking to a, a, a group of friends, whatever, 90% of them are going to be very pro-natalist, very just... And if you even mentioned it in a conversation like that, they would instantly be like, wait, what are you saying? It's not cool to have kids? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, it, and it's just weird that maybe this gives you a, like a good outlet to... Yeah, this makes people think, and it also has messages that people can't argue against. Of course, yeah. I mean... The logic is going to win, always. <laughs> yeah, so... It's, yeah, it's really interesting, because I agree, like... When I used to post anti-natalist stuff on Facebook, uh, Instagram and stuff, I lost so many followers. Oh, yeah, I bet. I had no idea how this was going to go, but you've seen it. Like, have we got any hate? 
We haven't gotten any hate, right? Yeah, that's um, crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the very minimum, I could hold a sign if you want. Um, if you want, it's up to you. You can hold a sign or do your filming. I well, don't... I'll film, get some great footage, and then, like, um, you know, if you have a conversation with somebody, you know, I'll film that if okay. you want. Yeah, I mean, I know you have fun. your GoPro or whatever, so yeah. that's cool, too. You can film what you can do whatever the hell you want. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but, yeah, I'll hold a sign, too, for sure. Okay, yeah. And then until you have, like, a... Uh, encounter or something, and I'll, I'll kind of, yeah. I'll film that, try to capture that. Yeah, you can pick any sign. You want. Awesome. Yeah. When did you try? I want to put your camera somewhere safe. You can put in that camera bag. All right, yeah, sure thing. You should probably put it in. Like, any questions about this? No, you got. Did you just drive back from Seattle yesterday? Yeah, I just got back at seven. Wow. I slept in my van at the Really? Jeez, you're traveling all over the place. <laughs> That's great, right. though. Just doing stuff having this re energizes me. Dude, yeah. this is awesome. This is what I want to do about the right to die, man. It's big time. Yeah. Such Sorry for the bad camera work, guys. I was just meeting Deets, so our meeting and conversations are better. This girl likes it. She approves. Both of them gave us the Which is ironic, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know the, that's, that's don't so know the situation, that's but... That's so common with this. It's we irony. so much support from grandparents and parents. Yeah, like what... I wonder what is going on there. And, you know, what's the logic is with the thinking? Is it a rationalization? Is it something... Because, I mean, you're clearly doing the opposite of what we kind of want, you know? <laughs> like... Let's hurry over this you way. You can ask hurry. 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 We're going to wait. Yeah. We'll wait. Uh, I got I to gotta get comfy first. Is that, is that your uh, grandchild? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. This is the end. This is the end. Nice. I like that. That's a good, that's a good catchphrase. <laughs> thumbs up. You just got a thumbs up. I mean, it's insane. Like, approvals. You know, they're everywhere. I have that brought that up, though, when I talk to certain some black people doing this. Okay, I'm gonna pick a I'm gonna pick a sign myself here and have some fun. Uh, make love, not babies. I want to get I, I want to get more into ethical, so normalizing anti antinatalism. Because people won't if someone thumbs up to anti natalism, like they'll understand what the hell is going on. But then again, you want to kind of make it simple because a lot of people haven't even thought about it. You could make a, a family without having kids, which is beautiful, which is what I'm doing. Um, Love it, love it. Join the vasectomy club. <laughs> That's funny. Child free and not regretful. I like it. Uh, I don't like that regret should be implied in child free living in the first place. That should be a proud moment, not regret. A declining birth rate is always good news. Yeah, but you have to have a certain amount of people to make the intellectual decision about uh, extinctionism and getting out of life. Uh, with the best ethical frame framework that you can, so I'm just um, going through. We're the most invasive species, but I think we all would be. Um, you know, you, you, you get a donkey to be, learn how to speak language and, and write. A donkey's going to become, you know, pure evil. So, but I love I love the message. I'm not trying to. Women are not <laughs> baby making machines, which is true, but I feel like I don't know if that's gonna get to the point. I love it though. And then stop pressuring people to have kids. I love that one. I really like that one. Oh, yeah. What is, what is, I'm, I'm reading upside down. What is, what is unselfish, what is an unselfish reason to have kids? I like that. Love it. I like the stop pressuring people thing. Stop pressuring people. It's kind of, yeah. Stop pressuring people. Environmental ones. Let's get a lot of. Yeah, I bet. Because we, you know, the only image flaw that you could have is you look like the uh, the uh, extinctionist. What's that group? The the the. Voluntary human extinction movement. No, the the, <laughs> the, the anti-extinction. Uh, ex extinction rebellion. Oh yeah. The the black and white has the extinction rebellion has the same colors. So, oh, okay. That's the only. That I, mean, could, I, pay, I don't really pay that much attention to their shit because they're such hypocrites. Oh yeah. Well, they're. I tried just talking a simple conversation with like twice, 
And they just shut me down. They just didn't even want to talk. I was oh just like, don't you don't have a conversation? You're out here to have conversations, no? <laughs> and they just shut me down. It was so insane. Those are paid canvassers. We don't shut people down here. Not stop having kids. This is a good spot. I found it ironic that those grandparents said the line stops here, which was a great line with their kid. Yeah. But I was also thinking, like, they don't, they're not the ones that get to decide that, right? Yeah, exactly. They don't know what that but, kid's going to do. If he's going to grow up and maybe, you know, have an accident with a girl or whatever, it's gonna, they're going to have a kid. Maybe his future goals in life is to have, his men, he'll become Mormon and, be, you know, have nine kids. Yeah. So although, he might just die really young. So the grandparents' intentions, what, however it is that they got there and to believe that, that's cool, but it's sort of too little too late, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully they'll encourage him to not have kids. <laughs> Yeah. What is yeah. it? Which one? Can I get it? Where are the most invasive? I know it's good. But I, I, my only thing thing with that is like, if donkeys became intelligent, had had learned language and could write, right. they do the same shit. Like you know what I mean? We're not special. Like we're not special. If any other animal evolved, it, it would be they would ex be exploitative. Rabbits alone. If any other animals like evolved to like the capacity that we like what we were able to do, I think. Yeah, some of them would be like super fucking shitty, like chimpanzees for sure. Oh, yeah. um, they'd just be not a mayhem. Yeah, I like the anti-natalism, but I don't. I, I don't know if people will. A lot of people don't know what it means, but it's good because then they. But it's one of those things where it'll trigger people to go home. And, I didn't and, know to what it meant at first. But yeah, I was like, I'm for anti-anything. <laughs> some people think it says anti-nationalism. Oh, that's true. True. But maybe they'll go home and Google it and whatever you know. Right. So. Yeah. And if they Google it, it might take them to stop having kids. Like, it's not one of the first search results, but... Yeah. The guy who donated to me for the billboard, that's how he found Stop Having Kids. He oh. He anti-natalism. Oh, wow, I mean, cool. he'd already been anti natalism but he just wanted to see, oh, is there anything new to check out? And then Stop Having Kids came up. Nice. That's awesome. How do you stop having kids? Um, I mean, because, I mean, for one, humans are the worst thing for the environment. Okay. Um, two, like, every human is a total risk and gamble. We can do things that affect other humans and other animals. Like, you know, the people who, who made your clothing, the people who made your cell phones, etc., etc. Um, you know, that's, they're doing those things for us. Yeah. Um, and they're, and they're doing those things because they're in desperate situations where they're just totally enslaved. Okay. Um, and we're encouraging people to, um, uh, if they do want to care for life other than uh, their own, to uh, help someone who needs to be adopted or fostered. Yeah. Um, in which there's so so much of that. And by helping someone who's, uh, like if you adopt someone, um, that's not like another carbon footprint for you, another suffering footprint, because you didn't bring them into existence. Yeah. And anything they do in life, won't necessarily come back to you, but if you have someone, everything that they do, you're still responsible for it because you brought them into existence. Gotcha. Um, is there like an ideal, like, no one has kids, like eventually. You want to check out the website too? Yeah, eventually though, is like the ideal, like, human race should, like... No, because that would be completely unrealistic. Yeah. Uh, we're just trying to inspire as many people as possible to make more political uh, choices. Okay. And the choices that align with who they are as an individual, because a lot of people sacrifice their own life to please like their friends or their parents etc yeah um but yeah just really just really cut down and get people to think about the collective looking out for the collective instead of just me and my kid yeah um but yeah i don't think we're gonna come close to inspiring everyone to not have kids and we're just a couple of people right now just hanging out in portland like yeah, it's yeah. not all over the world no no i'm just curious yeah no, i appreciate yeah. it yeah, yeah. Well, so, thanks for the info, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. Check out the website. I will do. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah, have a good day. He's kind of cool. Ready? Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, do you smile or not? What's the name of your thing? It's called TransitionEarth.org. Transition. Okay. And then there's something new. If you go to GirlPlanet.Earth, they're starting a stable planet alliance, and so we're also looking at population. So we're all kind of looking at how to talk about population issues without getting people all, like, don't tell me what to do, or, yeah. so. This has been really good for that. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the reaction from people? At, uh, at it's kind of different depending on where you go, but uh, generally, uh, when I've done this in Oregon and Washington, it's almost 90% support yeah. in terms of people who, like, have reactions that I can perceive. Uh -huh. um, 
yeah, I mean, most people that come up to us, it's either like very supportive or just like politely asking questions, and we have like really productive conversations. Um, sometimes people are like really hostile and aggressive. Sometimes they don't even give you a chance to explain that this is not anti-kids, it's not anti-parents. But if they're willing to actually listen to what we're saying, they usually like agree with us. Um, so it's been it's been really great. Um, yeah, you wouldn't I think you wouldn't believe like you know support. Oh, that's really good to hear. And thanks for being out here. And for sure. Yeah. I want to start giving away free uh, free condoms. Uh -huh. um, actually, I have some in my bag to give away. But there, have you heard of endangered species Yeah, I was condoms? just going to ask you that if you knew about them. Yeah, I applied like, a few months ago for like some free condom program for them, but I haven't heard back, so I'm just going to call or email them and, and ask. I think they would donate some. Yeah. Well, yeah, just, um, what's your name? Uh, Dietz. Dietz? Yeah, Dietz, D-I-E-T-Z. Okay, um, Suzanne. Suzanne. Okay, I know some people at the Center for Biological Diversity that oh, yeah. need um, condoms, so I could just say, hey. That'd be awesome. You know, I, can, I can give you... Um, yeah, if you have a card. I don't have any cards yeah, today. Card for the website okay. They're literally down the road and to the right. Like a process or something? Yeah, same block. There's an abortion clinic right there. Really? Oh, yeah, we're actually Thank you. doing that tomorrow. I have oh, it really? scheduled for tomorrow. Dude, cool. For the, the first one, actually. Oh, I'll okay. go over there. Thanks, though. But I didn't Sweet. know that was so close to here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go over there instead. Yeah. Documentary, or what are you, what are you doing? Um, here, I'll give you a card, because obviously it's going to turn green soon. Oh, sweet. Um, well, yeah, we're... It's about a lot of stuff. It's about reducing suffering in the world, uh, acknowledging overpopulation, uh, letting people know that it's perfectly fine to live your life and not have children. Or to, uh, we really encourage, if you do want to care for other lives, to adopt or foster instead. Donate or volunteer or some of the other things. Okay. Yeah, check out the website. Sweet, dude. Thanks. Um, yeah. Thanks for letting us know about that. Yeah, the Lilith, the Lilith abortion clinic. We're scheduled. We have. We're going to be there tomorrow at 10:30 a.m. But I didn't know that was so close to here. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Take care. Wow, I wow no that's idea. cool. That was, like, right here. Yeah, we should take a stroll maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. She probably has All right, guys. Yeah, take care. Thanks. Have a good day. All right, guys, I'm going to um, bail for now. That was a lot of fun. We're going to we're gonna head over to an abortion clinic and right around the corner. So maybe you'll have you'll see more footage. I don't know. Whatever. If not, take care. Have a good day. But otherwise, you may see me in a, see us in a second. All right. Later. Hey, how's it going? Hey, can you shake? Do you not? I don't want to. Yeah, all right. Cool. Nice cool. to meet you. Yeah. We didn't know you that you're a, a part of it. Oh, yeah, I know. That's uh, funny. Yeah, I saw you guys out there. I just thought it was cool that you were out there. Well, no, maybe we could have a good conversation or whatever. So, it's not like a documentary. What are you guys um, what are you doing? Uh, we're just um, out protesting. He's the leader of oh, okay. Stop yeah. Having Kids. We're not really protesting. We're doing outreach for Stop Having yeah. Kids. I feel that. Um, just getting people to think more critically about having kids because yeah. most people don't really put much thought into it at all. Um, okay. So yeah, and we're we're pro-choice. Oh, you're pro-choice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I know. I know. With the signs, everybody's like, "Oh, you must be a protester because you have something." You know, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. We're personally not protesting anything. Yeah. You know, we're just trying to have like really positive and productive conversations with people. Dude, that's good. That's and, good. Okay. Um, cool. So yeah. Helping people to feel less alone because a lot of people don't want to have children, but they're so pressured to have children by so many people. Yeah. So we're kind of like a counter to that. Okay, that's good. Um, or then, yeah, really all about like bodily autonomy and just right, people right, like yeah. you know living their life. Yeah. We're, we're Christians and we come out here to support life and we support women in choosing life for the kids. That's what we do. And um, yeah, we would say that you know we wouldn't be pro-choice because it's a it's another human being and it has a right to life because it's a human being. And so, um, you know, we don't think that it should be somebody's right to feel like it would be. That's, that's basically why we're coming from it. When you, I think, you know, I think once a human is born, they have like they have certain rights. But um, until they're until they're born, there's not. Um, may I may I make a comment? You're you're absolutely right. Except that, that this should say women are not. Women are miracles of creation. That's I don't what, necessarily believe that. Yeah, this machine um, just, This, this what, is actually one of our most popular signs, and women are treated like 
they are treated like machines. They should not the be fact, treated by machines, so we've got common ground on exactly. that. They should be treated like autonomous individuals. They, they are miracles of creation, women are. I think yep, to be pro-life is to let women make their own decisions whether they would like to abort or not. I don't think uh, a human is being uh, harmed by being aborted. A future about, human is being aborted. What about uh, the little women in the womb? Do they, should they get it right? Should they get a choice as well? No, I was saying I don't think anyone, I don't think rights come into play until like they exist in the real world. Okay. Um, and I think in the real I world, think if, you mean like outside the womb? Yeah, and I think if, I mean you know they literally exist, right? Like it's not. Like well, there's dimension. there's something going on in their bodies. That's, yeah. Uh, being built human, up, right? but um, um, I think I think if I think the pro life doesn't really make much sense because I I think it's just like a weird choice of words because if you were pro life you would be pro that woman's life who's pregnant yeah, and her doing what she wants with her body and a lot of uh, women um, after they a lot of women after they have kids their life goes to shit they enter poverty um, their social life goes to shit um, well, that's a common they, misconception they lose their freedom we come out here to support the women in any way we, we can support you know? both we yeah. have a bunch of resources like I know Julie set up for a car yeah for one yeah, woman we have baby showers and help the women um, yeah. and provide Stuff they need. Oh, no, I'm good. Thank you, though. Free medical stuff that they need. We provide all of that for them in order to help them. So we don't just, you know, say, oh, don't donate to them. Like, we don't help them. We want to help both. We encourage, at Stop Having Kids, we encourage people to help our existing life. Um, so there's over 400,000 kids in the U.S. foster care system. Just yeah. for example, there's millions of non human animals, about 600,000 houseless people. Um, so there's already so much life that's um, in great need, and by coming into existence, every human that comes into existence has uh, more resources that's taken away from the planet, uh, more air pollution, um, it just just more risk for everyone. Because every every new human's a gamble, no matter how they're raised. Yeah, um, and we're, there's already way too many humans, uh, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> we're pretty we pretty much like dominated the planet. We've forgotten that this planet is for us and other animals to share. And we've acted like it's our only home. Like, we've acted like it just belongs to us. Yeah, and we've become so that, parasitic. You know, we, like, we don't, most humans, we're just, we just take and take and take from the planet. We don't give back. And the planet's just going to crap because of our relationship with it. So if um, I could, can I push you a little bit on, um, you said, you know, it's in the womb, there's no rights at play. And then outside the womb, is it like right at birth? Is that kind of what you believe? Like, as soon as the baby's out of the womb and has rights right before it knows, is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. That's kind of like a complicated question because course, even yeah. when even when the baby's out of the womb, they're still not like you and me here where we're conscious of everything around us and, course, yeah. and we have language and we have interests and everything. Um, they're still... You can't, you can't kill them, right? Outside the womb? I mean, I'm not against... I, infanticide's always been a thing throughout human history. People have a baby. It's been an evil um, thing, right? I'm not if, if you're... If you're um, terminating a baby in the, the most humane way possible, and you're um, now they're not going to have to live a life of like pain and competition outside and suffering. The womb. Little little one year old baby outside the womb. Well, you said you said just born. You didn't say one year old. Okay, or one year old. Well, what's the difference? I mean, is well, there, I mean, there's uh, there's, there's like no difference. If it has two heads and it has cancer and growths and its eyeballs sticking out of its head. I, I was talking about a normal baby. Oh. Uh, yeah. Not, not but they, they never had a choice to make that decision in the first place. So the right is a weird word because it didn't ask, it wasn't asked consent to life in the first place. You impose That's that true. upon them. Yeah, I agree, yeah. yeah. So there's a problem but it also, with that. You know, this is, it also didn't ask to be killed either. So like, some would say you should just kind of leave it alone, right? Oh, I think intelligence should, should make a decision on whether something has endured too much pain or not. Even if right. it's a two-year-old. I'm talking about like just a regular old baby that's generally not yeah. in where, where in we society? Could. Where in society are we killing two year, regular healthy two-year-olds? Well, no, I'm not saying that you are, but I'm just trying to get to the bottom of your... Of the your bottom, the, yeah. Stop having kids is rooted in reducing yeah. suffering. Okay, um, so every you, every like human... Utilitarianism? Yeah. Every, okay, okay. every being who comes into... Every individual who comes into existence, that's um, so much um, suffering that they're going to experience that could have been avoided, and then they're... On a cause of, like well, our our decisions have consequences for many others. But by, by your talk, by, by by your logic, you sh you you none of us should be here. Yeah. None of us should yeah. be here. No. They should just wipe everybody off the planet. Not wiping people out, but well, yeah, but we, should, we saying, should we should exercise no, more self control. I, excuse my my loud voice, but I'm trying to be overheard. But I over overcome all the other noise. 
Yes. Uh, I listen. Uh, I totally respect both of you, and I, I'm hearing things that I are understandable from you. But really, the bottom line in your logic. Why the bottom line in your logic? Nobody should be allowed to exist. Period. No, we're not saying people shouldn't be allowed no, to exist. But we I'm should. Just talking we about should the exercise logic. self control to reduce suffering. That's so what there we're should saying. be some. We're, as I said, we're pro choice. If people want to have kids, go ahead. We're not going to ever try to enact any kind of actions or policies that stop people from. Uh, going about their life however they want to go about it. We're just trying to inspire people to be more responsible to each other and to the planet. Well, your basic logic there is good. I like that. I think so, that's an admirable. So, so how about this? Uh, so from my perspective, right, I'm a, I'm a Christian, right? So killing human beings is wrong because they have an innate, right, they have an innate value. And so they have this image of God. And so I would say it's wrong to kill that that human being, right? So from, from your perspective, why is reducing suffering good? Like, how do you, how do you square something like that? Why is reducing yeah, suffering like, good? Yeah, because you, you said you're a utilitarian, right? So you just I don't just identify as utilitarian. But okay, but you well, but you were saying like, oh, you know, it's okay if we just kill these people because just, just this general, there's generally less suffering, right? Is that kind of the? I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, you want to prevent future. Yeah. It's about prevention of future suffering. Right. But so, why? And, and so like if you you euthanize a dog or something, you're doing that in the in the in the welfare the so consideration. Of course, yeah, but dogs don't have like they're not moral agents, you know. They're yeah, they not are. Images of God. They are. You know, they don't have. Uh, well, no, if you not. but why would you impose a birth a life on a human that would be at risk towards no, no, sorry, that's not condemnation I'm asking. I'm asking from a god? You, like, why, from your perspective, is it good to reduce suffering? Right. Like from my well, perspective, why, why would you I not? Would say, <laughs> well, all right. You know I agree, I mean? As a Christian, I would agree with you that suffering is bad. But it sounds like you don't. You wouldn't agree with me. Like I'm asking you, how do you agree with me that suffering is bad? Right. Like you're you're not a Christian, I assume you're not. Well, I'm an atheist. Atheist. Okay. Right. Yes. So in your view, we I was from, a Christian though, so I understand okay, your yeah, worldview. That's, that's good. We're on, we're on the same page. Then. <laughs> so like from your view, right? We're bacteria. We just evolve. We don't really have any moral value, objectively speaking, right? Yeah, so, there's... So how do you... There is. There is, there is. Yeah, it's prevent moral, suffering. That's an objective value right there. Right, but where does that come from? Like, that, intelligence. Just, just intelligence. Just, so Not just, There's no deity in the sky that's that's impo like, so like imbued that inside of us. You just, you just kind of have value because you're intelligent? Is that how that works? Uh, deciding the welfare of other sentient beings mm -hmm. is an intelligent equation. It's not a. It's not. I think that's where we differ. Is it's no, not. No, no, no. It's yeah. not derived from a god. I, it's I, just two plus of two. Of course. Right. From your perspective, like, what what is your kind of moral ontological explanation for, you know, I don't want to say utilitarianism, but what you guys are saying, we're reducing suffering is bad. You know why? Like, if I just came, like, is it your opinion? If I came along and I said, oh, it's my opinion that you're wrong. Like, what's your argument with me there? Right. Like, surely must be grounded in something more than just like, oh, I like. I like preventing suffering, you know. Because we care about them. It's looking out for the collective. Okay, okay. And we think that, um, you know, there's millions and millions of individuals uh, existing in the world that are not getting their basic needs met. Their life is pure torture. Um, not not everyone who's not getting their basic needs met has a pure torturous life, but I mean, there are a lot of individuals who their life is pure torture. And I think we should be prioritizing those individuals instead of. Um, yeah. Instead of creating new humans, there instead are, of pressuring yeah. people to create new humans. Well, too. yeah, and I can see you're like you're very compassionate, and you, you definitely care about these people. Yeah. What I mean is like, what what is your care rooted in? Like, if because I mean you have arguments, right? Well, like you're, always, you're intelligent. I've always people, cared you know? about others. Like yeah, I'm I mean, just I'm just less selfish right. than most humans. And and like you're you're very intelligent people, and you're out here, you know, and you're actually arguing, and I I really respect that. I do. But yeah, what I mean is like, how do you what, like what's your yeah. argument if against somebody who just says, oh, I just don't care, right? Like if your argument is I mean they, rooted they, they in don't what have you care to. About, well, that's, then they're that's them, that's, that's that's them being. Okay. So you're, you're just kind of like, we're all we're all you're just kind of appealing to people who kind of already share your views with the signs. Is that how? That uh, works? No, no. This these signs get uh, we have interactions with a wide variety of people. With these signs it's, okay. they're meant for everyone. There's no specific target, um, and we're not like it's called stop having kids, but we're. The goal isn't to get everyone in the world to stop having kids. It's just completely yeah. unrealistic. Like, I figured, I figured. We're just trying to, to yeah, just trying to inspire. Okay. Like I said earlier, just trying to inspire people to make better choices and yeah. um, embrace uh, talking about uh, uncomfortable topics such as parenthood regret, which is extremely common. There are so many parents um, who, for one reason or other, regret having kids. It doesn't mean they don't love their kids or it doesn't mean they don't give them a good life. They just, if they could go back in time and not have kids and have the freedom. Uh, of being child free and so forth, they would go back in time and do that. Would you know um, there's also a lot of, there's also a lot of women who regret not having kids. It's like it's like that's, a huge percentage that's, of women There are who people don't. who regret not having kids, but in fact um, it's it's most it's most women who don't have kids. I, I totally disagree with that. Yeah. Most people I've ever known um, 
who don't have kids don't regret it. Well, it's, it's around and them. most people who do regret it is because um, they're like lonelier when they're older and they want someone to take care of them, so they regret it for like really selfish reasons. And it's, yeah. And one of the co one of the most common reasons to have kids for people is to have someone to take care of you when you're older, and that's exploitation. That's, that's I mean, yeah. I mean, I can see that. I think it's, it's probably not. Exploitable. Yeah. I and at least. Yeah, and at least if someone does regret having not having kids when they're older, um, it's not it's something you can live with. Um, yeah. If if someone had kids and they regret having kids, it's too late. Like the kids are already existing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so like I just wanna I just wanna kind of bring you back to um, the question. Like if I came up and I said, you know, hey, you you care about reducing suffering. If I said to you, oh, I actually care about like more suffering. I want there to be more suffering. Like what? Do you have any argument against that? Is that something that's a problem? No. Nope. I mean, you're like I said, we're all individuals. We're not all gonna think the same about different stuff. I, I think people who are like on the more compassion end of the spectrum and really do care about others, um, and their impact on the planet. I think that's like the minority of the human population. I think the majority of the human population is just living their life, not really thinking about the consequences of their actions, not really caring about well, what I others mean, are going through. That's true, through. but the majority of people are also, I mean, they're more realists. The majority of the population believe that human beings have rights, even if they can't square where they come from. Any yeah. sentient individual should be preserving of rights. Because uh, oh, they so can, sentient individuals? I mean, we, we deserve rights because so, so, we're real, right? Because we can think and we can feel, so our life matters to us. My, my side is real. Does it have the right to life? Like, if it's you, not real. It doesn't have sentience. sentience. If you tried to rule... Okay, so, so sentience, sentience. What what level of sentience? Just like any sentience. Any level. Yeah. Any level. So like a bird. Right. Yeah. Birds absolutely. Are extremely intelligent. All right. Any, extremely. Anything that can scream and yell, however way it does that, so is form is voicing is always suffering. Always 100 wrong. Like if I'm yeah. hungry and I want chicken, I'm just out of luck. I can't eat chicken. No. I mean, you can do whatever. Not at all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because so, because you killed that chicken, and so why so guys, is it good that you killed the chicken? Are you saying it's good? I'm not saying it's good or evil. I'm saying it'd be morally insignificant. It's like, oh, I want to eat chicken. I'm going to kill this chicken and eat it. Well, yeah, why, why, why don't you do the same thing with a human then? Because humans have moral value and, and chickens don't. Why do that's chickens why. not have moral value? That's because they, they don't. They're not that's, created in the image of God. They don't have any worth. Yeah. Well, that's where that's where we differ. Yeah. See, we don't we don't believe in these stories about like created in the image of God. We we yeah, just go off of what's what seems real to us and right in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And chickens are just as real as us. All the reasons that we matter are the same reasons they matter. We have way more similarities and differences, and any differences don't mean that we should um, go uh, express violence on them. So I just I want to I want to push you there a little bit because you said like any sentience, even a chicken or a bird. Do you know that uh, six weeks in the womb, a baby has detectable brain waves, and by something like 16 weeks, it has REM sleep and dreams. So you know we're talking about something with with at least a baseline level of sentience. Then, really then why does God? Why why is like whatever the percentage is, it's a high percentage rate, why does God, God yeah. miscarry children and these children die in the womb? Well, Was there a purpose for God that? God doesn't do it, it would, be, it would be natural. Like, we live in a fallen world, there's, there's death, so right? there's, 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 there's disease. People die. Yeah, people so God, die. God they chooses. Have souls, they have souls, so, you know, for some reason God chose to take right. them to have it. What about the t like, around 10,000 human diseases that exist that God had to have invented? Yeah, very, God very invented, tragic, why very did, sad. Why did God make 10,000 different diseases for that, That's a result of our fallen nature as man. We live in a fallen world. There's, there's sin, there's disease, there's death. Like, when, when wasn't there? When wasn't there? Yeah, the uh, Adam and Eve you thing? Like according to the Bible? Yeah, Adam and Eve before yeah, right. the apple, yeah. Maybe there's like infinite entropy in that one fruit or something. You know, yeah. it, was, it was a hypothetical. Like, suppose oh. I liked it. Yeah. Okay. I was just kind of trying to demonstrate. You know, from your position, you can't really ground your like disdain for suffering in anything other than what you like. So if I hypothetically came along and I said, no, it's, I don't like it's, your argument. That like that's it. You know. No, it's just fact. I, it's just objective fact that Wait, what is, what is a, 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 a squirrel that just got ran over by a car and it's yelping and well, twitching yeah, is like yeah, every, fact, everybody sure. knows. You know. Well, it's Let's a fact use, that it's, it happened, but are you saying it's a fact that it's that's bad? Uh, yeah. It's a fact they that it's bad. They have moral value. 100%. They're, they're we're, just we're as real as us. They care just it's from their neurology. Their, their brain. Their neurology, so the, like, the more neurology, the more, more value? Is that other No, words? no, that's no. no. You, you, no. Moral, neurology gives you moral value? Morals, I think you're you're muddying the waters with the word morality because that has some baggage there with theism. That's true. That's and true. I, if, if maybe if we could continue the conversation with ethics yeah. instead of morals, okay. we are might you, we might get are somewhere. You a are you like a subjective moral guy or are you a moral relativist? 
Uh, are you like? No, I think you're not an anti-realist. I think ethic, I'm, an, I'm an eth ethical, like ethical objectivist. And is There's this... objective ethical things that we should do okay. by preventing this baby to, to, to not exist because this baby might live a life of, of utter torment commit suicide, you know, right. all like, these things that, 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 or it might become yeah. Albert Schweitzer. They're not what, screaming, what a, of, they're not what, screaming to be shot out of the vagina. So when you say ethics, what kind of ethical framework is this? Like, it's not theonomy, which is from God, right? So it's, so it's from intelligence. It's right, just right, from, right, from, from just, what I'm saying we is don't, like, we don't need a book. We don't need a Bible or anything or a Quran or, or a bag of a Gouda or how do you ever bag of a Gita, how do you ever yeah. pronounce that? We, we, we can think for ourselves, we don't need some blueprint that some people wrote thousands of years ago. No, no, ago. I, yeah, I understand, like, you can know it, and I agree with you that it's, if everything that is right and wrong is completely plain and people are without excuse for what they do, that's something the Bible actually says. What about how about the Bible condones slavery and rape? Well, I mean, we can get to slavery and rape in a second. But um, what, what I'm trying to ask you is, um, you know, like, your moral, this, this ethical view that you're coming from, it's not a, it's not a theonomous view, so I'm saying, is this, is this heteronomy? Is this, like, oh, this is what the collective believes, so that makes it right? Or is this autonomy as in, like, this is what I believe, and, it, and like, yeah, just I can't autonomy. Like, like, we don't have to put a label under it. So, we're not, so like, it's a personal, we're not subscribing It's a personal belief that doesn't apply to others. It's a personal belief that a lot of people agree with, yeah. Prevention of suffering is an objective truth. There's no, there's okay, no subject. You said personal belief, and you said objective. Yeah, we might disagree on that. Okay, okay that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Yeah. Just it, it, let's assume you're God. Yeah. What if you knew that this two year, the, the baby's gonna be born with some condition, develop yeah. cancer at one, and yeah. at two, it's gonna torment for a year, yeah. and then die of some horrific yeah. cancerous disease at yeah, two? I've had, a, I've had a pretty hard. Would life. you? I'm saying, would would you have <laughs> aborted that kid if you had the knowledge that that kid was going to go through that for the two years? With, with, I mean, uh, with it, Stephen it depends Hawking, on the level. Is of, Stephen Hawking's life was a torment? Yeah, it depends on the level of torment. But I mean, it, you know, let's say that there is a child and it's going to be born and it's going to be on fire for the rest of its life and it's going to die at the age of two. Then I would say it's a yeah, like you can kill the kid. It's gonna it's it's gonna die and it's on fire. You know. So that's so we, that's what we're trying to. Right, because it's it's dead anyway. It's a dead, it's a dead kid, and is this dead kid gonna suffer a little bit before it's dead? Like that's kind of what you're asking. You're not saying die versus not die, which is basically every abortion. We're talking about this kid is literally going to die and it's suffering. Should it suffer before it dies, or should we kill it? No, but the fact the fact is, we know that these things happen, and and preventing those from well, yeah, potentially yeah. happening just because you kind of want to have this feeling of having a motherhood, a parenthood. Sorry and God's imbued your child with this purpose that you feel, and it's kind of all because of a selfish reason, you it's know? It's extremely rare, though, to, you know? To like force that. pregnancies, you know, they're perfectly fine. Right, and, and to add that um, there have been several cases where doctors have made the wrong call and said, oh yeah, this baby is gonna have so many problems mm -hmm. and it's gonna die by this time, and then they end up being perfectly healthy, or and the opposite not so. Too. Well, yeah, but statistically, though, it's, less common for that it would be more pregnancy. there'd be more ultimate suffering in the end though when the opposite is true though when they neglect something and then they let the thing live and then in the future so 10 years later it gets run over by a van you know so i'm just saying that there's no t there's no problems with non-existence problems only are created once existence happens so well, now what's, that what's there's existence there, you have a dilemma you know what i mean and we and we know everybody dies and usually most of the time in tragic ways. So you're kind of imposing that on the kid when you create them, it is this risk. There's a risk yeah, I'm equation that you have to come, come to where you're saying, I'm throwing, into, in, I'm throwing you on the tightrope and how you fall and which kind of dagger stabs you and which way when you fall is up to you. And I feel like that's neglect, carelessness and recklessness because right. you're not considering, the, taking a careful consideration for the welfare of that kid. You know, you're just having the kid because you think God wants it and you want to have this little family and have yeah, good no, I mean, feelings very, and stuff. It's a huge decision, yeah. I agree with you there. Yeah, right? yeah and I mean, most I'm, people don't I'm make that decision, though. Most I'm people are just, I can't though. wait to come. Yay, this is yeah. a great orgasm. Oh, right. Yeah, no, we agree that that should not be happening. Stupid, we yeah. agree that people yeah. should uh, yeah. think it out I mean, and you know, uh, they should just be popping out. Yeah, exactly. They should just be, you know. From suppose everybody on the planet had the means to have a good life. You know, they didn't. They, they could have a, any house they wanted to in any place, part of the world they wanted to. Uh, all their needs were met uh, from a temporal point of view. But they won't. Are you say? Would you still be having this argument about not having kids? Yeah, because that doesn't okay. exist. Because the only goodness okay. that has arrived yeah. is from the lackness of suffering and negativity. 
The only good feelings you ever feel isn't a good feeling. It's the mitigation of the suffering. So when you when you eat a meal and that was a good meal, it was only because you start you were hungry. Um, you know, the only your back problems that went away because of your back pain pill went away because you took the pill, and, it, yeah. and um, that's that's the, the, the there's a there's a, a asymmetry of suffering there. So why, why is that good? Why is getting rid of suffering? Why is that a good thing? It's a re it's a it relieves it relieves uh, discomfort. Yeah. Can I ask um, you oh, yeah. Uh, so suppose well, that you do know in the future that a future life well, is going to suffer. Today. I didn't bring is there anything that yeah. could yeah. outweigh that suffering that would make that life yeah, worth living? Times, I'm sure. I'm sure. It's a great question, but I'd say some people might have lived their life where on their deathbed they go. I had a good life, you know what I mean? Yeah. I had a great life, like, not bad at all. You know, they, they, do they dodged all the bullets of suffering, or, or of major catastrophes. But the thing is, in order for existence to happen, and for all of us to be here, there's also a price to be paid of all the people that don't live those happy lives. And I would say a very, very minority of people live a full, happy, healthy life where everything is good. And obviously you can't go back and ask the dead, was it worth it, right? You can't, you can't have the dead come back and be like, yeah, it was all worth it. My death was totally worth living, you know what I mean? It's only when you ask the existence of a person you know, is life worth living only happen. when they've had a great life like, obviously they're going to say yes but you've also like, like we're on living yeah, on the skulls so, of, a, of a holocaust so to speak like, you know what i mean we're living we're living it's because, because of the existence of the homeless or whatever that so why the the, the, the the rich guy gets to live on his big huge suite up on the top of the building and i would say that that's not just not worth it so i would say yes there's people that probably have lived a good life, and they say that I've lived my life, and if I lived, if I could live my identical life again, I would. Um, I just say that's a tiny percentage, like a really small percentage, and it's and it's living on 110 billion humans that have existed and died mostly painful deaths. So suppose that you just think of a homeless person who's lived a pretty hard life. So suppose uh, someone you know, tried like, uh, to kill that homeless person. Know, you could would the homeless person defend so themselves, do you think? Yeah. You're, should they? Yeah. Would they? This question in particular. Um, I mean, would they, de would they defend themselves? Would they defend themselves? From harm? From, from someone trying to kill them? Uh, yes, but that doesn't, that, that doesn't mean that they're pro-life. You know, that doesn't mean... That, that, like like one minute before they were trying to get murdered, or they were, uh, you know, murder was happening, they could have been thinking, I wish I was dead, I wish I had a right to die, you know, I wish there was, I could be euthanized, I hate my life, I want to jump off the bridge, you know what I mean? So even when he was attacked by the murder a minute later, he's defending his life because he doesn't want to hurt, get hurt. Like a knife coming towards your throat, even when you're suicidal, you're probably like, no, nah, I'm good, I'm good. So he thinks that his life is worth living then. I think it's not a yeah, but maybe I would say yes, but I'd say yeah in a different way that you think than I think. They have an existence. You have an interest to continue ex of existence, um, just because your natural biology. We're, we're conditioned to, to to continue to survive. That's why it's so hard to kill yourself or something. You're a determinist, so isn't that how all thoughts are to you? Intelligence can trump, can still kind of drive the wheel of determinism in a sense. It doesn't mean that my will is, is driving the car, but my intelligence can say, oh, old lady crossing the street, if I go left a little, I'll kill her. Or I should go right and just kind of avoid her. My intelligence, I'm, I'm still, was not deter I was still determined to be in that predicament of the old lady crossing the street. But my intelligence can That's circumvent right. that and go, no, let's take it easy and go to the side. Right, and I guess well, where I would go with that is, um, you know, biologically you say that, um, you know, we're the same as like, you know, birds and stuff like that, you know, other animals, right? So if you take it well, from that... Okay, not really, but yeah, right. go ahead, sorry. Right, but like, you know, they, they're intelligent too and they have a, a level of intelligence, right? Like ethically speaking. Or like, you know. Sorry, Re can you repeat that? So I like, want to make sure I'm, we're on the same road. Right, right. So like, so biologically and then also like ethically, you're like, oh, we shouldn't, you know, we, we should view like birds and like, you know, other beings, like we shouldn't view them differently than us just because, you know, like they have intelligence too, they're intelligent too, so they should like... Like, like I guess, I think it was what he was saying earlier, yeah, yeah. where like, you were saying, like, should we be able to, you know what I'm talking about, like, the uh, the chicken, like, being the same as the chicken, um, and like, um, 
our sentience and, and the sentience. The, yes, yeah, that's yeah. that's where I'm going. Sorry, no, <laughs> but yeah, okay. so that's where I was going. So no, we're kind no, of all on that, like they're sentient, so they have value as well, and they or like they, you know, should be able to exist and stuff like that. Too. Well, I guess my thing is, is like if we're taking that standpoint, um, you know, biologically, other animals will kill other animals, like slaughter other animals in order to um, not suffer or in order to better their environment. Some do. There's there's lots of vegan animals out there. Yeah. Right, right. But like there there are a lot of animals that will kill other animals or be territorial and towards them. Too, yeah. and torture oh, it's a horror them. show out there. Right. And, yeah. and rape other like rape. Oh, it's the a horror species. show. Right, right. So yeah. I guess my thing is like one side is suffering there. But like they're doing that, they're killing that other animal or raping that other animal to lessen their suffering. So is it okay for them to do that in order to lessen their suffering? Not at all. Not at all. Because most of the time those are temp temporary re reliefs from their suffering. Like the rape is just for an orgasm. The the eating is just for a, a snack, you know, a lunch. And, and it's just like so. The best. This is where we'll differ. I mean, I just met him today. Like, we online we've done some philosophy shows together, like podcasts. But I just met him physically, just right when you saw us down there. But um, we might differ in differ in this. But I, I have a, I have a philosophy called Ephilism. You might want to check it out. And it's a sort of a extinctionism philosophy where if neither of those animals existed, the one being eaten or the predator or the prey then there just wouldn't be any sort of pain and negativity existing at all. So that's where that's where I'm at. I think I think no, none of this should them. exist at all and it would be a good thing. The best way to make sure that they don't exist is to kill them, right? So that, Yeah, no that you have would to be doing a moral good because it'd be making sure oh now now there won't be two more animals or um, infinite. Yeah, no, you would have to compromise on your theoretically if we just nuke the whole planet and killed all humans. Like, there that's would just what, never be any more suffering it, for the rest it, of the time. Yeah, There's wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? So, like, are you saying that that's good? Like, are you a, Absolutely. Are you a sadist or something? And you want to no, no, not at all. I'm totally <laughs> ethical. I hate nihilism. It's so Why? stupid. Okay. So, so I, it's, it's, it, no, it is completely the most moral thing and the most careful thing. That's the, to, that's kind of the problem. No, but you ha it is a problem. It is a predicament where you have to have a, a con like careful consideration towards what kind of method you're going to use towards extinctionism. And are there going to be... Uh, collateral damage is there prices that are going to be paid probably we're not, we're not going to be we can't invent a red button that we push that just instantly everyone evaporates and is you know gone and so you would you would have to for a temporary moment yes I'll, I'll admit you would have to uh, put aside your, your ethics because you know you're preventing the future like let's say I killed everybody today and everyone suffered for like a, a hard 10 minutes it still means that it, I would prevent hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of years of sentient beings being eaten alive, slaughtered, killed, raped, so murdered. That's objectively good in your view. Yeah. Yeah, because you've prevented okay. that, and so it's it's one negative event that prevents. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm and, with you. Yeah. I applaud your consistency. It's right, just right. it's a little bit nutty, you know, killing everybody for the good of everybody. Yeah, for the future, the future. Because I wouldn't want to... For the future bad of everybody. <laughs> right, but personally, and, and I know a lot of people would probably agree with me, I've had, like, a lot of suffering in my life, but I still believe, like, I still want to exist, and I still believe I have value and I should exist. Yeah. Like, how, how and, and is you should... your view as, like, as far as, like, um, you know, reducing suffering and stuff like that, so we should just, you know, kill people, that would be the best yeah. thing. Well, I yeah, disagree like, I with that. So I don't mean, right. I don't mean, yeah, I don't mean it probably the way it sounds, but oh, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't want you to take it the way that I, you, right. you might take it. I know it's extreme sounding and I know it probably will never happen, but I would just say like 99% of all animals that have ever lived have gone extinct. We're not sad about that. We don't care. Whatever. We got all these new species that we enjoy. So that's all I'm saying is if the humans went to be extinct, What's this? What's so bad that's happening? You know, unless of course, yeah, right. You were murdered or something. You know, someone came up, and slitting your throat. Like bad things. Yes. So like, you know, I hope that clears it up a little bit because I don't want you guys to think my view on extinctionism should be catastrophic, creating all kinds of harm. Um, but anyway, I'd probably differ with him about that. Yeah. And then I guess I would go on that. Sorry, I guess I would go on that too and say, why? Why would somebody coming up and stabbing me and murdering me? Why would that be bad? You know, like if I'm, if I'm just, 
Well, it would be bad to me, but it would probably be bad to other people, too. Right. It would probably, it would probably be bad to other people, too. It would cause suffering for other people. So it would cause yeah. suffering okay. for him, who's my fiance. Uh, it would cause suffering for my mom. You know, she loves me. So, so that's a bad. Right, it's a bad, but maybe it's not so bad for him. You know, and, and it's, for the killer? it's not bad for, like, those people over there. They don't know me. They don't know me. It, it should be. It should be. Oh, we were going to have, like, 90 kids. Sorry? All those 90 kids that we were going to have. Right? None of them were born, none of them could suffer. So that's a good thing, right? It's one less person, you know, one less problem without you, kind of a thing. Well, one person, you know, one baby, that's why it's kind of so important, I think, for us to do what we're doing is one human can has the potential to, to create a million progeny. So, like, if one person or two people have one kid, that one kid has a kid, has two kids. I mean, the amount of kids it took for us to exist and just stand here and talk is a million. So should it be for a thousand years, it's a million. Good, it should be an infinite good for a finite bad, right? For now yeah. all those her descendants. So it's good. It's actually it would be good if I killed her. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. No? You have to have to be intelligent about it. You have to be okay. really smart about and, and take be real smart about how I kill her. No, you gotta be smart about how you're gonna prevent suffering. That's it. That's all. And we can do that with intelligence. You know. We do that with hospitals. I, I hope they didn't take it too hard because they were trying to, you know, so we should just no, kill I mean, everybody, you know, that kind of thing. We're more trying to push you and see where you go. So, like, I appreciate that you're, you know, yeah. consistent. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I would agree that, you know, killing all humanity is good. Yeah. But. Well, what are we doing yeah. that's so good, though, you know? What are we doing that's so good? You no, got, I, I you got coronavirus and raping and world war in Afghanistan and whatever, you know, like, what? Yeah. I mean, by the same the time, price is, though, why, like, why is that bad, you know? But what if someone, like, gave birth to someone who's a doctor and heals all the how rare that is, is that, that right? People have always I mean, been making those kinds of hypotheticals. And well, what do you think Eric? is a hypothetical? There are doctors and, and, you know, people who, you know, heal people and, you know, help people. And there are people who, uh, you know, uh, fight for the country or they, you know, go in and save someone from a burning building. You know, yeah, I mean, a that's a not hypothetical. It's a real thing. gamble. And I don't think humans should be brought into existence as a means to an end. We already have, is 8 billion not already enough? <laughs> if you convert 8 billion into seconds, it's just so you have some perspective of how big 8 billion humans is, that's 254 years is 8 billion seconds. That's a lot of humans. That's a lot of years. Um, and we cause a lot of, like, air pollution is getting really bad, and we're losing our rainforests, our oceans are dying. Everything that's critical to sustaining our life, as well as other species, is uh, really dying off right now. I mean, a lot of people aren't paying attention to it, but it doesn't mean it's not happening. All right, guys, we had a fun time. Wait, oh, sorry. Okay, we had a fun time here with Deeds. Nice to meet you, buddy. Yeah, nice to meet you too, finally. Yeah, and uh, we had a good time chatting, and I don't, what it, you know, hope you enjoyed it, whatever it was. And this is cringy doing vlogging stuff. I hate it. But just wanted to say bye and thanks. And See check you. out his website, stophavingkids.org. Yeah, check it out. All right, later.